September 20th, 2019, the day that the people of Earth discover that the US government has been hiding the presence of extraterrestrials from the public. Our millennia of intergalactic solitude has finally come to an end, and the greatest question ever asked by science has at last been answered. Are we alone? For decades, the people of Earth have been visited by aliens from another planet, who have worked in secret cooperation with the United States government. These aliens have crossed the vast distances of intergalactic space with mind-bending technologies in order to mutilate cows, show up as blurry blobs in videos, and conduct experiments on abductees involving probes in very uncomfortable places. The truth is no longer out there, it's finally here, or in the open. Or perhaps September 20th, 2019 will merely be the day that many hundreds of misled people get arrested for trespassing by the US government, earning hefty fines, long sentences in a federal prison, and ending up with experiments involving probes in very uncomfortable places of a totally different sort. Today we're going to look at the phenomenon that has swept the internet, the massive plan to raid Area 51 and plunder it of its alien secrets, and turn to a friend of the show and former security expert for the US military as he tells us why storming Area 51 is a terrible idea. On June 27th, a Facebook event hosted by three different Facebook accounts appeared publicly, entitled simply, Storm Area 51. They can't stop all of us. The event would later be claimed by a Maddie Roberts as having been started in jest, but the joke very quickly caught on and went global. As of this writing, 1.7 million people have signed on to the event, and another 1.3 million are interested. The official date is set for September 20th, 2019. For the hours between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., while Roberts has come forward and explained that it was a joke, he did so only after the event skyrocketed in popularity and out of fear that should something really happen that the US government would be looking for him for being the ringleader. He wanted to publicly declare that the event was a joke and he was in no way serious about storming Area 51. Whether he was serious or not is likely not to matter come September 20th with the event gaining popularity around the world. While most people signed on to the event as a satirical joke, it's clear from the Facebook page for the event that there are plenty of people who see the opportunity to rush the secretive restricted area in mass as a way to at last plunder its secrets. The rallying cry of, they can't stop us all, has made many people take the event seriously, and it's now feared that on September 20th a large group of people will make a serious attempt to enter the secretive base. Recently, the US Air Force sent out a message addressing the online joke, warning that any attempts to illegally access the area is highly discouraged. So could enough people breach the secret base's defenses? What would happen if they did? And why all the hoopla over Area 51 anyways? Area 51 is situated in a remote corner of the Nevada Test and Training Range at Groom Lake, which is a large expanse of desert where US pilots hone their abilities dropping live and dummy ordnance on ground targets. It was so remote in fact that it quickly became the premier destination for developing new and advanced planes for the CIA and the US Air Force. It was, for instance, where the infamous U-2 spy plane was originally developed, a technological marvel of its time which flew so high that it was for years out of reach of Soviet fighters and missiles. The facility was also the home of the infamous Skunk Works, a group of engineers who developed some of the world's most advanced airplanes, and from which the likes of the SR-71 and the F-117 came from. Any other information to include if the legendary Skunk Works still operates from the site is difficult to verify as the entire facility remains a highly classified secret and the US government barely even acknowledges its presence. Satellite imagery of the site though shows that indeed several buildings and flight lines have been constructed, and curiously enough, a flight line long enough to land even the biggest aircraft developed anywhere in the world is clearly visible. Others claim that you can see in some satellite images how the flight lines lead to underground bunkers, though the veracity of those claims is dubious at best. If alien life was visiting planet Earth and the United States government had in fact gotten its hands on some of that alien tech, or was cooperating with aliens, it seems that Area 51 would be the ideal place for such activity. The site is notoriously remote and difficult to get to, miles away from any road and difficult to spy on due to the mountains that border it. But could you penetrate it and if you did, what would happen? Our expert warns us immediately that any attempt to penetrate a restricted military facility comes with serious consequences. This isn't Stranger Things, this is real life, and trying to get into a restricted area can land you with serious jail time, huge fines, or worse. 
Trespassing on a restricted military facility can carry a penalty of up to 10 years in federal prison and is often accompanied by a fine of tens of thousands of dollars, which you will be obligated to pay before or after your prison sentence. Naturally though, the condition of your trespass is often taken into consideration, with our expert telling us that if it's clear you were inadvertently trespassing, then you would likely simply be apprehended, searched, debriefed, and then driven back to a point outside of the facility and be freed to go. If, however, your trespass was purposeful, you might get the book thrown at you, specifically if it seemed like your trespass was malicious malicious in nature, as in you were actively trying to steal government materials or secrets. Different restricted areas have different levels of secrecy, however, and some places, termed black world facilities, are so secretive that your trespass and ensuing trial are all kept under the strictest of measures of secrecy, with no details of your trial becoming public knowledge. No, you're not tried by some secretive shadow court and condemned to the dark side of the moon, but rather your trial and everyone involved, including your lawyer and any witnesses, are all forced to sign extremely harsh confidentiality agreements with very, very strict penalties for breaking them. That is, of course, if you are arrested, because our expert tells us that there is one more option for dealing with trespassers, and that's to simply shoot them. No, this isn't Soviet Russia, where you can get shot for just hopping a fence to a military base, but our expert warns us that there are concentric rings of security around restricted facilities, and if you penetrate deep enough through those rings of security, you eventually hit one ring where deadly force is authorized, no questions asked. Of course, these areas are always very clearly marked by signs, which state as much, so there's no chance you would wander into an area where you could just get shot for being there with no authorization. You would have to make the choice to continue pushing forward, despite the risks. The reason why these harsh measures exist is simple. Some secrets are so vital to national security that the government cannot risk their being discovered by foreign governments. Take for instance the Manhattan Project. If knowledge of how to build a working nuclear weapon was discovered by the Germans, the entire course of the war may have taken a radically different route. If you manage to penetrate the outer layers of security and get to those shoot first, ask questions later areas, then it means that you are there on a mission and you are likely seeking to cause great harm to the US. So what would happen if you joined 1.7 million people in rushing Area 51? Would you get to see dim aliens? First, our expert tells us that you would run into a sign warning you that you're entering into a restricted area, and typically warning you of the penalties for doing so. Most secretive government facilities aren't behind huge fences, as that would be far too obvious a giveaway, but rather they rely on extreme remoteness and large tracts of empty land to discourage anyone getting too close. Throughout this seemingly empty landscape are security patrols dispersed throughout the first two outer rings of security, and even if you don't see them, odds are that they see you. Armed with high-powered visual aids, night vision, and thermal imagers, these security personnel are vectored in on trespassers by sensors hidden under the ground, pressure sensors buried under avenues of approach, and seismic sensors throughout the entire outer perimeter give alarm operators perfect situational awareness of the miles of empty landscape surrounding the secret facility, and typically a host of hidden high-power cameras allow them to spy on any portion of their perimeter. If trespassers are detected, they are typically allowed to wander through the first outer perimeter of security without being intercepted. That's because these areas are so large and remote that people wander in and out by accident all the time, and the security personnel at the facility prefer that you never even find out you had inadvertently strolled into somewhere you weren't supposed to. The entire time you're in the first ring of security though, you will be closely monitored from afar, sometimes even by air through drones, and likely not have a clue that you're being spied on. If, however, you continue forward, you will reach the second outer ring of security, much smaller than the first outer ring. The second ring is continuously patrolled by security personnel on foot or in vehicles, and penetrating it will result in a security patrol being immediately dispatched to apprehend you. Our expert tells us that you likely won't get too far through this second ring of security, as you'll have been carefully observed the entire time you approached it through the first ring. A patrol will move to your position and apprehend you, search you and your vehicles, and typically debrief you or just move you straight back to the outermost perimeter and warn you not to return. Should you somehow evade detection or capture though, you'll reach the inner ring of security, or at least the inner ring of the outer security zone, because there remains one more inner ring that's within the facility buildings itself. Here movement of personnel is highly restricted, even amongst the personnel who work at the facility. And even though you may have the clearance to work at one part of the facility, you may not have been cleared for any other part of the same facility. In this inner ring though, even the base staff have to be on high alert against straying where they don't belong. 
For you, a complete outsider who doesn't belong at all, straying into this area could be deadly. It's here that signs warning the use of deadly force are placed, and while it can be up to the discretion of the security commander or even the individual patrol that discovers you, you really don't want to press your luck. Remember, only really bad guys would be interested in getting this close to a secret facility, so any responding security personnel are going to assume that you're out to cause some serious harm to the US. We cannot stress enough how dangerous it would be to penetrate this area. These are all, of course, the outer layers of security, and inside each facility our expert tells us that even more stringent security measures exist, with even greater repercussions for violating them. He would not elaborate on inner security measures, but did tell us that many times the guards restricting access to the facility might themselves not have a high enough clearance to be inside the facility itself. That's how seriously classified some facilities are, and an entirely different team of guards with an even higher security clearance may be assigned to work the actual insides of the facility. Though our expert would not comment much on the inner workings of restricted facilities, he did leave us with this story. I was assigned to a facility with two outer doors, each with a more stringent set of security measures to verify your identity before you could pass. The outer door was open to the outside world and the second door, where I was located, was inside a small room connected to that first outer door. There was a scanner machine that worked automatically, and my job was twofold, ensure nobody trying to access the facility messed with the machine as it verified their identity and credentials, and if the machine ever set off an alarm I was to immediately terminate the individual attempting entry. Once the machine granted entry I was not allowed to look inside the open door and had to stand with my back to whatever the door opened up into. After speaking with our expert, it's clear that storming Area 51 would be a terrible idea. While group posts claim that they can't stop all of us, our expert warns that yes, they very much have the means and firepower to stop even a major incursion event, and that if whatever is inside Area 51 is of vital national security importance, then they will do just that. He warns us that the most sensitive of these facilities were designed to stop a full-scale military assault. Also, though he would not go into specifics, our expert told us that in all likelihood, even if you managed to defeat the outer security, you would simply be never able to access the actual facilities themselves as part of their security measures include the ability to completely lock out the outside world. After watching this video, do you think you would try storming Area 51 or not? Think the US is really hiding aliens? Also check out our other video, What Happens at Area 51. See you next time!